This is a demonstration video that I recorded solely for the purpose of testing transcoding on new servers or graphics cards. And although at this distance you probably cannot tell, but I am switching back and forth between hardware accelerated transcoding and CPU transcoding in Plex. And in today's video, I wanted to do a few simple tests to see if there's a major difference in quality between hardware accelerated transcoding with the graphics card or just some good old fashioned CPU transcoding. Coding. What's up YouTube, Jason here with my... <laughs> What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Like I said, in today's video, I really wanna just do some very basic tests just to see if there's a major difference between hardware accelerated transcoding with the graphics card or just using a regular processor. Now, this has actually been somewhat of a curiosity for me because I've had many people comment on or talk to me about the difference between GPU transcoding and CPU transcoding. Basically, people saying that with hardware acceleration on a graphics card that you do lose a little bit of quality. People asking me the question, I mean, do you want to lose that kind of quality just to gain a little bit of performance from the hardware acceleration? And my answer has always been, well, I don't really notice the difference because I've never really compared them side by side to see an actual difference in quality, which to me meant that if the quality was not noticeable, I didn't feel like I was losing out on something, I just didn't really care. I figured, hey, it's good enough. But I decided to take a closer look, zoom up on some of the video, and actually compare them side by side. A couple things to note here is that I did play everything with the most up-to-date Plex Media server, and I used the Plex Media Player. Both of my videos were about 15 megabits per second source, and I transcoded down to 4 megabits per second for each one. Also, I recorded my screen with OBS recording at about 30 megabits per second. Just keep in mind that YouTube compression is going to take some of these artifacts out and you're probably not going to see as much detail as I do while I was editing. But hopefully, if I zoom up far enough, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. As far as hardware specs, my testing bench is a Ryzen 3900X with a Quadro P2000 from Nvidia. No, I did not have the opportunity to test an Intel QuickSync CPU with this testing. Unfortunately, I wish I could have added that, but I just don't have anything available to do this testing with. Right now, my test bench is Ryzen and that's really all I have to work with. So let's take a look at this pond. As you can see right now, it's just at a normal 100% scaling. At this distance, it will be hard to tell when I switch, but on the left is going to primarily be hardware acceleration and on the right is going to be CPU transcoding. In fact, if I had to venture to guess really from this distance, you're not gonna see anything when I'm switching back and forth. But let's go ahead and zoom up 300% on the shoreline. With the shoreline, you actually have a shadowed area where the water meets the grass and there's a little bit of shadow there. And although at 300%, the pixelation on this 4K video does get a little bad, when I switch back and forth between GPU and CPU, you can definitely start to notice a difference in the smoothing used for hardware accelerated transcoding. If I start to move this slowly from the left, you can definitely tell where the GPU is adding a little bit of smoothing to the video in order to, I don't know, make it easier to transcode or try to clear things up. But when I'm zoomed up like this, I can definitely tell a difference in the sharpness of the video video meaning that in the shadows, I am definitely losing some detail. To try to blow this example up a little bit more, let's go ahead and go into 650% zoom. And honestly, I think this example is gonna speak for itself. On the left, the GPU transcoding blur effect is strong. On the right, you definitely see more detail in the shadow, in the water, and in the grass. Meaning that overall, at least in this one particular example, the GPU transcoding drops down the quality somewhat significantly. Now for an example that's a little hard to notice, I can move it up to the trees. In editing, I'm definitely able to tell a difference in the sharpness. However, being that there's not that many shadows, I don't see as heavy of a blur effect as I did before. So while some of the details are lost, it's a lot harder to tell. And the same thing can be said with this grass line, where again, you do lose a little bit of detail, but because there's not a lot of shadows, it's not as obvious. So from this example, I can definitely tell that most of this blurring effect is gonna take place in the darker or the shaded areas of your video. Now, of course, it's gonna show up because I'm zooming up 300%, but as I showed you in the beginning, when you're just at a regular 100% video, although you can definitely tell, it's just not as extreme. 
So to give you another example, I'm going to show you some screenshots from the movie Back to the Future. I'm not actually going to play the movie just, you know, to make sure I don't get hit by copyright, but I will show you a couple screenshots. And from this first image, it is kind of easy to notice the difference in the detail, especially in their skin tones. But again, let me zoom up on this image and get closer to one of their faces. This is where the GPU transcoding really shows its true form by blurring out the skin, making it look smoother, but removing a lot of those fine details that most people have have in their skin. In this particular example, I mean, it's almost a difference between being able to see little veins in their forehead or the imperfections in their cheek. Something like razor burn wouldn't show up as much just because it's gonna smooth out the skin. I mean, I know I'm taking a full 1080p movie and, and dropping it down to 720p at only four megabits per second. So I'm going to be losing some of this quality and some of this detail. But still, when you see the CPU versus GPU side by side, you can definitely tell the difference in the overall, just minor details in the skin, especially when zoomed up on it. And in my last example, it's actually kind of like at a different angle and it almost seems to add more artifacts to the video. It's like it's trying to compensate for something and it to me, it just kind of makes it look worse. I didn't really notice it at first, but when you really zoom up on his face, you just start to tell, wow, the, the GPU transcoding actually kind of makes it look bad. Yes, I know, again, it's like three, 400% zoom, but still, when you look at it, it's just a little surprising when you compare it side by side. So it really comes down to this. I mean, hardware accelerated transcoding with Plex is amazing. In the terms of like, you can add a P2000 to your server build and unlock, you know, 28 1080p streams if you wanted to. I mean, when it comes down to bang for your buck, you just can't compete with the value of hardware accelerated transcoding. And I think for most of your enthusiasts out there, you're probably not gonna be watching a lot of transcoded media anyway. I mean, you're just gonna be direct streaming it on your TV inside your home. So you're gonna be watching a direct play version of your media file, and that quality is gonna be whatever your file has to offer. However, if you are somebody who has to use transcoding for whatever reason, and you wanna get the best possible quality you can, it seems, at least from these few examples, that using a CPU to do your transcoding versus a GPU, you can definitely gain some detail and some better quality out of your transcoded media. However, it seems, at least from these examples, that if you you are kind of worried about how good your quality is because you are being forced to transcode and you want to get the best you can, kind of seems to me like CPU is the way to go. I mean, if you're forced to use four megabits per second from a 15 megabit file, maybe you still want to be able to see some of the details in their skin. Well, guys, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this testing down below in the comments. As always, this video is part of a monthly Plex sponsorship, so thank you to them to sponsoring my channel. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe below and have yourself a great day.